We get two glasses of water. Yeah. So you. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, hello everyone. Um, oh, sorry. Hello everyone. Um, thank you so much for coming, uh, attending our live talk, artist talk with Omias Kifliasus. Uh, my name is Akena Malbert. I am the program and artist manager for Addis Fine Art, and I'm incredibly excited to welcome to the stage Omias Kifliasus, who's presenting his solo first solo exhibition with the London Gallery, uh, titled Cascade of Knowledge. Um, and I'll just kind of give a bit of a brief overview of Omias Kifliasus. He was born in Addis Ababa. Um, and studied at the influential art school there, the LA School of Fine Art. Um, he actually lived here in London for a, for a while, where he studied at the City and Guild Fine, School of Fine Art in London, where he did his BA. He subsequently moved to the uh, moved to Belgium, where he studied at HISK, where he did his postgrad studies, and where he has now stayed and lived uh, ever since. Uh, so he's, his studio and his home is in Brussels, in Belgium. Um, so I thought I'd start this artist talk with a, um, just kind of beginning by delving a bit into your period of time studying in the LA School of Fine Art. I had the pleasure of visiting the, the school in 2019, where I actually came across some of your older works, which they still have in storage there. Um, and I kind of wanted you to discuss a bit your time studying there. Of course, you studied under some of the influential painters, such as Tedessa Mesfin. Um, but you also, that's where the beginnings of your practice, which incorporate the recycling and reusing of material began. So I thought, I just wanted you to kind of begin with uh, that early period of your career. Hello. Thank you. Thank you, everybody who follows. Uh, yeah. Um, how can I start about art school? Yeah. Uh, for me, art school was very important because as a child, uh, we were not allowed to draw a lot or to paint. You have to wait a summer or uh, you have to pass your exam. And for me, when I went to art school, it was like uh, welcome home. And uh, that was very important because it's the first time I met people who think different, who pe people have a different view, but uh, it become a society. Mm -hmm. And uh, my teachers and my friends and uh, my colleagues are extremely important mm -hmm. for my development of my art, I can say. And um, my teacher was, uh, uh, I have a lot of teachers, mm. and um, like Mesgabu, Taddesa, Bekala, Gash uh, Zarihun, um, and there are many more. And I mean, for us, it was uh, extremely important to have all of them together to help us to, uh, to learn art, because uh, we have to learn from the beginning, from a scratch, mm. where there is not a lot of history of uh, art schools or mm. th where there is no um, mm, foundation. We just have to create it, you know? Mm. Um, could you talk a bit about the where you began to, I mean, kind of look at recycling and re... Oh, sorry. Can you talk a tiny bit about that early period and when you started to look into recycling and reusing material during your time there? You were saying... Cause there was a bit of scarcity of materials there, so you had to kind of be a bit more innovative with, you couldn't just discard yeah. something because you didn't like it and start again. So could you just uh, elaborate? Uh, yeah, ah, sorry. Um, for us, you know, it was, uh, the first thing you need to come to art school at that moment is the love to art. Mm. And you have to sacrifice, to, to sacrifice uh, your, your, yourself, mm. that it's not only about your brain, it's something about your heart also. And uh, uh, there was not enough materials, or th there is not enough uh, uh, colors, uh, brushes, or canvas. And we used to recycle old works, which uh, other classmates did it, or uh, uh, someone's art uh, canvas. We reuse it. Mm -hmm. And I think I didn't do it purposely at this time, mm -hmm. starting from that point. Mm -hmm. But I was uh, very much aware uh, of a trust which left before me, mm -hmm. and how can I interact with that trust? or with that marks, mm. or with that scratches or cracks. Mm. And for me, this was important. Uh, at the same uh, moment also in, in, in our art school, every time there is a, a small show on the top room. Mm. And for me, it was interesting because every moment when I go up there, uh, when I feel sad, I, I go to a painting which makes me happy. Mm. When I feel uh, 
uh, confused, I go to a specific painting. And at that moment, there were things which disturbs me. Mm. I didn't like it, but now they became my colleague, which helps me. And that's a bit strange to, yeah. to explain it, but it was important, I can yeah. say. Yeah. Well, um, I wanted to, to begin by, um, there was a really beautiful William Blake quote that uh, Daphne Astor kindly provided for this exhibition, which I thought was a really nice place to start with. Uh, to see a world in a grain of sand and heaven in a wildflower, hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. And um, I just kind of wanted to know a bit about what that quote meant to you and to your practice in terms of the, as we were kind of just talking just now about um, the, uh, I, the kind of the complexity of looking at one, something, for example, such as a grain of sand and seeing the universe or seeing infinity. And uh, I kind of wanted to know a tiny bit about how that relates to your practice. Uh, uh, for me, you know, like uh, creation and destruction is at the same point, like the universe. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, it's important. I want to take the viewer to a world where uh, pigments and uh, liquid meet each other. Mm -hmm. And I want them to dive in in that world and to give them a new experience. And uh, it's very important. I go to the maximum or to the minimum part of oil painting yes. to the deepest. and. Uh, after that, I have to take to go out and give you something else, mm. and that's very important. Yeah, that's mm. nice. Thank you. That's, uh, and um, on that point, so could you? So you actually said uh, about your work, your work isn't about politics, but rather it is uh, it is politics themselves. And um, I guess it's interesting because there are quite a few uh, parts of the um, uh, some of your works which discuss things which are political or not so much overtly political, but kind of, uh, kind of imply politics. And I guess I'm interested to know what you think of uh, uh, how you relate politics to your work. Okay. Uh, for me, I'm a kind of a conservative uh, painter, I can say. I'm, I'm specifically, I work in oil painting mm. and the tradition of oil painting is a long, long time. And uh, uh, that is, it is related to where uh, uh, oil and pigments met each other in a cave and after that you have renaissance they created the tradition of stretching canvas and uh, primer and paint and uh, varnish mm. and my my concept exists in between those spaces mm. of the uh, physical existing piece of uh, canvas you know mm. and uh, for me uh, like institutions where they keep those paintings are the most politicized spaces and also they are kind of uh, uh, power seats, you know, mm. where, where, uh, 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 where uh, a country shows his power mm. and uh, they are very polit politicized mm -hmm. artworks. And specifically when I work in this uh, 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 oil painting, for me, my works are not about something, they are about themselves. Mm. And uh, uh, at the same time, th I am a kind of an artist who organize experiences but that experience uh, is important. It becomes a full experience with the interaction of the viewer. Yeah. And uh, for me, the piece itself, uh, you have to come in front of it and interact with it. And that makes it political because at this moment, especially in the COVID time, uh, what we learn is we need to slow down, we need to calm down and slowing of the viewer or uh, giving the viewer another, another dimension mm. to experience a painting, at the same time to open the nature and the phenomenal part of oil painting to a, board, a broader or to a bigger um, possibilities yeah. by itself mm. is a, a, a deep objective politics, I can say. Mm. Um. And uh, one of the central themes I find throughout your work in this exhibition, but also uh, older works, is this constant tension between Africa and Europe. Um, and it's interesting because you take sometimes almost like a playful, tongue-in-cheek, but also sometimes a very kind of uh, critical lens. And I think it's interesting because uh, of people of African descent, there exists a double consciousness, when you, especially when you live in Western societies, where you're constantly aware of historical linkages, which perhaps other people in society are, are not so aware of, particularly related to colonialism. And um, I'm quite interested to know how that, how that kind of that tension uh, influences your work, both, both on a micro and macro scale. 
And I'm thinking particularly about some of your older works. There's a painting titled uh, Setting, which is a, a landscape of, uh, of London where you see a bird's eye view of the British Museum. And you described it as a wash in African colors or hues, which uh, in terms of uh, reds and yellows, which are reminiscent of an African sunset. And um, yeah, I was interested to know more about, you kind of, you touched upon this, which is how you see these um, art institutions and art more generally uh, their role in, in the West's historical understanding of Africa? Okay. Oof, it's a big subject. Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to make it simple to, to explain it. Yeah. Um, for me, is, um, my job is to bring uh, stories from the other side of the world, yeah. which, uh, which the world where, where we forget or we, we... I think for me, is Africa is a, it's not a country, it's a continent mm -hmm. first, and, but this continent is extremely dynamic every time touched the world, everything changed during history for centuries. And uh, from this, this continent was treated not good up to now uh, for many reasons. And, uh, but always the, we were bringing new ideas, new um, things to the surface, you know? And my work relates a lot uh, to this kind of surface because uh, I use as a metaphor oil painting mm -hmm. because you have the canvas, you have the primer, you have the oil, and you have the varnish, which is the shiny, the beautiful part. Mm -hmm. And me, I try to gather my energy from under all those and just trying to spring out some new ideas to give it another dimension. Yeah. And in this contest, uh, way of thinking, mm -hmm. like uh, uh, the museums, uh, like setting or uh, thinking Africa, painting uh, Europa, all, all those works, are uh, dancing in the territory a little bit, I can say. And uh, uh, also, like museums are in a, in a big problem now this time and in a confusing time, they don't know how to deal with it. Uh, there is a lack of collaboration. Mm -hmm. There never been a deep uh, connected route of collaboration with Africa. Always it is like, uh, we know for you guys, you have to follow us or you have to listen to us. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you see the museums and uh, uh, the roads, the streets are shined mm. by the African uh, shiny lights, mm. you know? Mm. And uh, I, I play with that territory a little bit, I can yeah. say. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so I guess, um, kind of going off of that point, there's a, uh, another uh, aspect to your work, which is you do infuse a lot of uh, paintings from the Western art historical canon. I'm thinking of particularly Bonjour Monsieur Colbert, yeah. the painting which is just around the corner in the gallery. Um, and it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's a really interesting painting that you chose to invert, you flipped it round and you painted it. Kind of, it's lost within all of the colors, but you can make out this very distinctive painting. Similarly, there's a painting titled Picasso in the, paint, in the, in the exhibition where uh, Picasso is, uh, is a kind of a portrait, but there's other things kind of going on. And I guess, why is it important for you to paint these uh, artworks um, of, like I said, paintings that were uh, known within the Western art historical canon? What uh, uh, for me, it's a kind of dialogue or it's a kind of uh, interaction or collaboration I'm trying to build up with the uh, old masters at the same time uh, from the other side of the world. We have uh, ancestral art or primitive art or, or unknown art and uh, by connecting those uh, different angles or different dimensions, I try to, uh, to bring new works to the surface. Mm. And uh, the Courbet work one is interesting because um, Courbet is a kind of uh, uh, one of the early um, not classic art, but early mm, r realism. <laughs> and uh, th that was important for me because we, in, in, when we were in Ethiopia, we studied uh, Russian uh, realism right. and uh, European realism also, and those things. And uh, I have things I relate with him right. also at this time in this contemporary art world. There is things I miss, which uh, uh, it really interests me from the classic time, like composition, rhythm, and also uh, the works, they talk about themselves, you know? Mm. They give them many years and hours for a specific work, mm. you know? And there is a lot of calculation between X and Y. There is a, uh, 
written, there is many things which interest me from that period. Yeah. And how can I uh, combine it with this contemporary art world and interact? Yeah. Uh, like Courbet did, you mm -hmm. know, as an artist, he took his stick and his easel to walk out from the city. Yeah. And for me, uh, this can be my uh, village, yeah. you know? And you uh, saw, you said, I remember you talked about that painting, you said you saw yourself as the protagonist in that painting. And the, the two collectors you were seeing and the other two? Uh, they're kind of a bourgeois. <laughs> yeah, sorry, but yeah, I was yeah, bourgeois. Yeah. Or, yeah, the of the artist. Yeah. So you, you kind of saw yourself in that role. In, uh, in, in a kind of contemporary version, yes, yeah. it can be, uh, yeah. Um, and I guess that, that kind of leads on to sorry. Uh, sorry. Um, that takes us on to the the way in which you paint, which is very very unique. Uh, and I know you have some secrets that you won't uh, reveal here today <laughs> that you still are holding close to your your chest. But I guess it's uh, it's really interesting when you see. Of course, we've been looking at these uh, JPEGs of the artworks, but it's when you see them in real life that you notice how deeply layered they are. Some of them are in, in pasto style, so you can actually, they're almost kind of three-dimensional, they're sticking out from the canvas. And then the others, you really see the, um, the kind of, the rugged, torn canvases, the, they've been stapled to the canvas. There's a real, uh, there's an element of almost like kind of DIY, like you really feel the essence of the painting. And I guess I wanted to know um, a bit more about how you interrogate painting itself, especially in relation to how you interrogate the properties of oil paint, but also the physical uh, uh, canvas, for example, and, uh, you know, the process in which you, you create your own paintings. Thank you. Uh, for me, painting is interesting because painting is a kind of a light for philosophy and for life, you know. Always uh, painters, they just open somewhere in an invisible way in the space. Mm. Uh, things or they close things and after that slowly they spread to the society and things change mm. maybe not but that's what i believe you know uh, as as we know everything is connected mm. uh, i try to create a small echo somewhere if it's possible and that echo echo vibrates and change things mm. and uh, uh, for that reason i was thinking for many years that how can i find a specific physical space inside the painting. And uh, uh, this comes also from my childhood. I was very much curious when I was young that uh, uh, I start to notice all the magazines which they come from Europe, publication of art. Uh, every magazine, the same work is different, you know? <coughs> the color is different, it's the same work and it used to irritate me a lot. But when I came to Europe, I, I noticed uh, the real work in the museum is completely different than it was published in the magazine. Mm -hmm. I said, wait a minute, there's something wrong or it's, in, it's something strange. And after that, uh, also there was another thing which is interesting is on those magazines when I was a child, there was a, uh, the x-ray of the work mm -hmm. of the museum collection. And for me, that was scary because I don't know if it was a, a real work or, or the photograph or something. Right. And I was much, I was, I, I, uh, I was much aware that there is something sacred deep inside the work right. itself right. and uh, going to a micro level, you know, mm. because when you see in the uh, publication, they show you in a zoom, in a micro right. details. Yeah. And maybe they develop those things, uh, those things develop in my mind and I, I became very much aware mm. or curious. To when I see a painting, I don't only see what is painted uh, because oil painting is a living thing, it's always change. Mm. It's a history of change, actually. And uh, uh, now, when I do, I'm aware of those uh, changement. Yeah. The one we don't see in our eyes, mm. we need a specific tools to, to, to read it. Mm. Uh, but um, at the same time, sorry, there is this uh, layer I was explaining you, space in between. Mm. And uh, those space in between, keeps energy and for me I work with a dynamic energy which exists in between things right, right, right. and could you um, sorry. could you just uh, tell us a bit about this really fascinating aspect of your your practice which is the going and sourcing old canvases which you then use I know you're this is a part of your <laughs> like a, your the recipe you don't want to <laughs> like admit to but just if you just tell us a bit about that process of, uh, uh, yeah, because the, if you see uh, 
the tradition of way of painting is you have the hand, you have the canvas, mm -hmm. and you have the brain. And it's the relation between the hand, the canvas, and the brain. And for me, I, I want to, to, to make it open this, and uh, uh, I want to bring other things on it. And that is a collaboration, you know? And some of the paintings, which you don't see them here, but which are under, mm -hmm. or which are on the top, are kind of collected from a street, or a friend give me, or, or my own painting, which are recycled. And it's a kind of uh, bringing a group, or bringing a society together to make a painting. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's why it's, it's, there is a lot of layers right. at the same time. But it's a kind of uh, bring, uh, making a village together, yes. and uh, springing out from the village, and that's why when the viewers are in front of the work, uh, uh, they have to bring their own experience yeah. and connect with this, and they have to walk. It's a kind of uh, between relief and sculpture and painting the work. They, are not, mm. uh, they don't have only one exit or one uh, entrance. They have many ways. Yeah. They, can inter they, can have the, they can have their own interpretation. Yeah. But the important thing for me is uh, often painting are done with the artist and the, pl the canvas and the idea. But here, uh, there are others next yeah. to me, yeah. uh, anonymous people, you don't know them. Mm -hmm. They are just uh, my angels mm -hmm. or they are my messengers, mm -hmm. which gives me uh, energy to take you somewhere. Right, right. Um, yeah, uh, thank you for that. And I think it's interesting, kind of, I've seen you just speak in the, in the gallery space and people will ask, is this part of the old canvas, is this, did you and you and you really relish the ambiguity of your paintings? You don't like revealing, kind of where uh, where your work not necessarily where, where, where of, of course it's all your work, but where the old canvases end and new begin. And uh, yeah, you really kind of enjoy that that liminal space between uh, the exactly, two. Yeah. Um, I guess I wanted to come to some of the more the specifics, uh, the specific paintings in this exhibition. One of my favourites is uh, Denknesh. So I've practiced a while to, <laughs> to be able to say that. Um, and I really, really love the story behind this painting. Um, and uh, I think it really kind of captures the essence of your practice, like, incredibly. It's got, again, this tension between Africa and Europe that we've sp spoken about, incredibly layered, incredibly complex. And it's, uh, it's an, incredible, there's an incredible story behind it, which I personally didn't know, and I know I'm sure many people that first encounter the painting didn't know. So could you just tell us a tiny bit about uh, Denknesh and the name, the, 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 the name of the, the, the artwork and what it talks about? <laughs> yeah, uh, Denknesh. Uh, Denknesh is a, a, a kind of not big painting, it's a uh, humble painting, I can mm -hmm. call it. And uh, how can I explain it? Uh, for me, it's, uh, uh, I'm much interested also about naming things, you know, mm -hmm. about uh, uh, when you name, you possess them in a certain way. And normally, Dinknesh, her name is Lucy, yeah. but uh, we, we gave her Dinknesh as a kind of marvelous. And Just explain who uh, Lucy is. Uh, Lucy is one of the oldest uh, human born, which is found in uh, uh, East Africa, mm -hmm. I mean, 3.5 million years or something like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, it's interesting to think about uh, uh, this person, someone somewhere existing many millions ago, yeah. making a kind of scratch or marks on the ground, yeah. or, or uh, contemplating mm -hmm. about marks, because uh, mm -hmm. marks already existed, you know? When the tree scratches the, the ground, or when the leaf falls, or when the butterfly is uh, dying and her wing is falling or things like that. Still, marks exist, uh, scratches yeah. and forms exist, but when human, human in, in exist, they start to, to read those things. Mm. And after that, they, they start to imitate them and start to interact with them, mm. uh, what I imagine. And for me, in the creativity, those, those are important moments because it's where uh, the human yeah. and the nature and uh, the concepts start to collaborate together. Mm -hmm. And I have another work which is called uh, Early Marks. Yeah. Uh, for example, in Early Marks also you will see uh, goats and human. Uh, it's an old history, kind of legend history. We think like uh, coffee existed and was discovered in uh, Ethiopia. 
And uh, for me, that point is important because one of the earliest mark where human and uh, plant and uh, animal collaborate to, to bring some new ideas. And that ideas, we take them, and after that uh, early morning, when every time when we drink coffee before a meeting, it gives us a boost to have a new ideas. Mm. Mm. And uh, those kind of uh, uh, marks existed many thousand years ago yeah. from the other side of the world. Mm. And uh, I was trying to, to give a mark yeah. of those things. It's my work is not illustration at all of those things, but uh, to build up the work, I need those dramas to, to, to cultivate the work, you know? Yeah. Yeah, uh, thank you for going on to the early marks, which is going to be my next question, which, uh, as you said, it details the, it, well, it depicts the, the folkloric tale of the discovery of, um, of uh, coffee, and it's a really, really playful painting, so there's, you see the, the goat kind of upside down, caffeinated, yeah. which I, I know we can all, we can all, <laughs> can all relate to after one too many coffees, and, um, and, uh, yeah, so I, I, I again, that, speaks to the fact that in your paintings you constantly see a story, a tale within this, uh, within one work. And um, uh, even in Bonjour, um, uh, Mr. Koga, the, you, you were the one who pointed out the dog, which is, you can just about make out. And there's a, there's a constant kind of discovery uh, aspects within your work. Um, and I want... I, I oh, sorry. Something about the dog, maybe. Because I, I like dogs. <laughs> because in, in, in this work, maybe... The exhibition starts actually with, with a kind of Picasso dog, mm. and uh, it's a kind of barking from uh, from past or barking from the other side. And uh, in, in uh, Bonjour Monsieur Courbet, uh, for me, uh, there is a dog on the middle, and that dog says many things because uh, in this works I do specially, there is parts which are beaten or disappeared, mm. or uh, and there are kind of cracks or echoes in the dog is a good symbol for, for those kind of, uh, 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 to, to make us awake or to mention us or to protect us also. Yeah. And that's why I was talking about the dog actually. You also about the, spoke about the dog bite and the, the way you yeah, yeah, yeah. feel about the yeah. in, in, in the work I do, there are a lot of bites. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a lot of pieces. Yeah. Um, and uh, I guess I'll come on to another painting, which again was a, uh, was uh, extraordinary when we when you told us the origins of uh, this area in Ethiopia, which is Dalo uh, Queen. Yeah. And uh, if anyone hasn't seen it yet, I would highly recommend just googling this area in Ethiopia, which is D A L L O L yeah. Dalo. And uh, it's this most extraordinary kind of otherworldly landscape of yellows and greens and reds. And it was when I looked at this landscape, which I, you know, you're you're. You, like I said, you really enjoy the ambiguity of your painting, but looking at that landscape and then looking at the color palette that you've chosen for these new, this new body of work was, I mean, it was like a, you know, kind of like a, uh, a light bulb moment where I realized <laughs> that I just kind of could see these, all of these colors running through uh, the, the exhibition. So can you tell us a bit about the inspiration behind the Dalo Queen, but also this area in Ethiopia? Ah, yeah, it's a very interesting area. I think also it's in Eritrea and Ethiopia, a little bit maybe in Djibouti, you find this. And I mean, East Africa has its own uh, dynamic, dynamism uh, through landscape, through history, and uh, through many things, I can say, actually. And, but for a painting, this is a very good inspiration because uh, it's a kind of, uh, not chemical, but it's a kind of minerals yeah. which, which makes this all colors. And... Uh, uh, as an artist, I'm sure you will be inspired from those kind of paintings. And also, uh, uh, is it painting? Painting is a kind of layers, or is a, a one single color it doesn't exist by itself. It's a kind of it needs to be collaborated in order to have the full version of a color. And uh, for me, it's a very important place because it's uh, the most lost place in the world. Mm. At the same time, it's very hard to live on it but it's a kind of a mental space, yeah. just where people, they don't know yet what is, if a bacteria exists there, or if it doesn't exist there, or for future maybe, uh, if you wanna go to Mars, we need to study first there what is going on, you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, painting is a little bit like going to another universe, mm -hmm. because it, it needs to take you somewhere in order to have that experience. It's not about uh, only about mental, it's about uh, 
experience, experience which goes to the visceral, you know? Mm. And uh, for me, that visceral experience, how can I bring it to the painting, mm. you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you for that. I think um, on that kind of color palette, though, after I discovered, after I saw the area of Dalo and the first painting, aside from Dalo Queen, I thought of was the painting to our, our right here, which is uh, Ferengi. Uh, which is a, a word I know all too well from my my time in my time in Addis. Which I guess uh, I think it, I, so. Ferengi means I, I mean obviously I'm, I, I, from my own understanding is like a playful a playful kind of use of the term, kind of similar to I guess like a gringo. I guess you like, you consider it. It's it means uh, someone uh, different than you. It's yeah. not uh, because Ethiopia. Most time we were not colonized. We have a very positive way of looking the outside. Actually, right. the other the thing we don't know. Mm. You know, it's a name called it's someone who is different. You know, we, we call him we call them Ferengi if they or uh, they call them uh, different hairs or something. But it's not connected to the color of the skin or mm. or something. You know, it's, it's more more about the difference. Right. And uh, that's in, that's important. Mm. Form in this work, especially, yes. we don't see a Ferengi, it's kind of abstract, but under there is a hidden uh, Ferengi, mm -hmm. which I painted, that you don't see it. Right. And uh, uh, in, in the work I do, it's important, the thing you don't see is important as the thing you see, mm -hmm. because there are things which are hidden under, which have to be discovered by the process, you know? Yeah. Also, uh, in my work, it includes, in a strange way, this kind of... Uh, Mm, uh, restoration, restoration mm. art. Yes. But I don't re restore art, yeah. but I use a lot of uh, restoration uh, 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 techniques or right. mentality uh, mm. to use it in a contemporary version. And uh, in this work, under I can guarantee you there is a figure which is Ferengi hidden. When we use the X-ray, you can see it. Yeah, when you, if you use the X-ray, right. you will see it. But I'm not gonna tell you if it's a, a a lady Ferengi or a man Ferengi? Okay. <laughs> it's for us to discover. <laughs> to discover it, yeah. Um, I'll come on to one. I wanted to end on the one last painting, which I thought was uh, resonated with many of us uh, when we first saw it, which was the painting Touch, um, which is a scene which is like seared into uh, the English consciousness after this summer, which is uh, uh, Chiellini, the footballer, uh, pulling back uh, Saka. Um, and I found it a really interesting. I just found it really interesting that you painted that scene because uh, I think it's a scene that many of us English people want to forget after <laughs> after the loss at the Euros. And um, but I was really interested to to learn why it resonated with you and why you kind of wanted to immortalize it and paint it. And what did the imagery uh, mean to you? Uh, that image is taken from a TV or something, I think. And for me to uh, to make kind of a trend transcendental figure or image from this time, mm. which talks of this moment, I can say that was the time when I was watching that football because it's a kind of in a tricky way the guy was pulling him mm. and uh, the goal didn't happen. But after that, he had a chance to, to, to score a goal, but it didn't work out. Yeah. And uh, I think this can be a metaphor where we are now as uh, uh, the relationship between Africa and uh, Europe mm. in a certain way. I mean, I mean, People they can have their own view, mm. but uh, uh, for me that was important to f as an artist to find which image to paint yeah. or uh, which figure you want to make it transcendental, yeah. and uh, that's not easy. Yeah. And which articulate the moment, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think it can explain very well the 2021 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. moment of uh, the relationship we have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Thank you so much, Amias. Yes. I think um, uh, we'll open up to any questions that we might have from anyone in the audience. Okay. It's just to, um, um, actually, it's fine. I just wanted to see if you can elaborate a little bit more about this particular painting. Can you be a bit more, uh, can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Oh, uh, now I'm going out of paintings, I think. <laughs> 
uh, but maybe it's good. I mean, a, a painting is, uh, for me, is a kind of a, a neighborhood where, where, where you end up to make a discussion and to talk about it. And uh, we, 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 we can't talk about, about that moment uh, of the, uh, the tricking. And uh, I mean, for me, it's like uh, the more I get old, I start to read a lot and I start to see a lot is uh, Africa is always the one which brought many things to the world. But at the same time, for many hundred years, we can say it was treated very badly mm -hmm. and uh, uh, because of lack of collaboration and because of lack of uh, uh, ignorance and many things. And uh, we always talk that now it's becoming a little bit kind of uh, mm. a hype to talk mm. about colonization or things like that. But there are things which is happening now also in all our Africa uh, challenges, you know. Yeah. Um, but we, we, ha we, we have to keep an eye that are we, uh, are we giving a good attention uh, not to repeat things, you know. Mm. And uh, those are the things which we million people face at the same time, you know. Mm. Mm. But this is nothing to do with the painting, I think. <laughs> Is there any more questions? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, when I see your palettes, most of uh, the paintings, I see three colors, uh, yellow, green, and a bit of red. Can we say it is a mark of identity because it is associated to your flag or? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I don't think I don't think in this way. I mean, for me, I I see many colors, you know, and often uh, uh, colors only they don't exist on the surface itself. It's a kind of interaction between different colors. Also, there is a mental color we bring, you know, and when someone comes, he can bring his uncle. For sure, there will be influences. But uh, for me, is is uh, the important when I paint is um, there is between warm and cold. Colors. I, I play a lot with, with the warm and cold, and uh, uh, but I, I, it's colors. Also, they don't have uh, nationality or they don't have uh, countries. They just exist for themselves. Mm, but the nice thing about color is they are immigrants because they come from all over the world, you know. And uh, that is interesting uh, as an artist. How can you spread in this tiny little space you have? I'm busy more. How can I spread? Uh, where can I put the yellow, where can I put the red, or where can I put the blue, or where can I put those things? It's a, uh, uh, there is extreme process which pass to, to spread those paints, uh, because there is a tradition also which is already uh, happened, uh, how to spread the colors. You have the classic way, you have the Renaissance way, you have the primitive way, you have many ways. And at this time, how can I make a new painting by spreading them in a different way. And I think I managed to develop certain kind of methods and uh, uh, a kind of concepts which are supported with techniques. And uh, for me, uh, those uh, concepts are important to spread the colors. I mean, so I'm interested in, um, in this sort of play in your work between the figurative and Abstract, you know, that it sometimes look. I mean, in the one we'll, we've been looking at a lot while listening to you, the paint, big painting behind you has a very distinct, you know, kind of lots of passages of deep perspective and the, you know, the river running through it and so on. It's very intriguing, but some of them are almost entirely abstract. You know, this sort of painterly gestural abstraction with possibly just a little glimpse, a little vignette of something figurative yeah. buried in it, and I wonder. Do you sometimes start with a painting purely in painterly terms and 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 improvise, fi you know, find an image or or an image comes to you after you've started working with the materials of paint? Yeah. Uh, for me, there is no abstract or there is no figurative or there is it's all they all exist at the same point, but uh, uh, the thing is, the more you go deep or how can I explain it? But through process, there are things I just make, they end up becoming abstract, and there are things which end up very figurative. But to, I don't have no fig, clear uh, figures before I start, and it all comes after process, and thinking, and working, and 
uh, removing and more often actually the abstract one inside maybe there is figure or the figurative one uh, somewhere there is abstraction it's a kind there is a, a play and tension i can say between figuration and abstraction for questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, is there any other questions, Asya? Well, thank you so much, Amias, and uh, thank you for this wonderful, wonderful exhibition, which we're very excited to have uh, up in our ex exhibition, in our gallery space. Um, and the exhibition will run until the 4th of December, uh, December, so if anyone's watching, please come by and uh, pay us a visit. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure.